So your secrets, if you really look at yourself, you will be speechless. What happened to being doctors and teachers? What happened to being your brother's keeper? Nowadays, kids more worried about. Alright, what's up YouTube? It's Paradox and I'm here with another episode of Paradox Unscripted. And funny thing, I'm actually recording this on Wednesday and normally that's kind of when I want these uh, unscripted episodes to really go up. But that's besides the point. I really, really got to talk about this. And if you're new to this series, Paradox Unscript is just where literally I plug in my mic, I have a topic in mind, and I just go. There is no filter here. There is just me talking. So it's a bit of a ramble, bit of a just a... Um, just for me to get my thoughts out, get my thoughts out there to you without having to sit down, write a script, and really just sitting over this issue. Now, of course, the huge, huge, huge topic here on YouTube right now at the moment is Destiny. And at the time that I'm recording this, I have not started my Destiny um Series. I have multiple series planned. I have a, a free-for-all series coming to this channel soon. And look out for the Guardian Gang. Yes, that's the name of another series. Guardian Gang over on the Quad Gang channel that will be starting very, very shortly. I want to remind you of that. Now, Destiny. Destiny, Destiny, Destiny. It's finally out. It's finally here. And so much has gone into this game. We've heard of a $500 million budget. We've heard of this sprawling, epic world experience. We've heard of these sound controls and this amazing story and lore and everything. But the game comes out and it practically bombs. But not really. Financially, it did not bomb. This game has sold a crap ton. This game has sold so much. And it's really crazy. But if you look from a critical standpoint, and my review is coming soon... So I'm not going to really put a lot of stuff from my review in here. If you look at a critical review standpoint, this game is getting like a 6 or 7 average. Now, for a lot of people coming from Bungie, it's like, you know, what the heck, man? Like, what in the world is going on right now? So, and you hear a lot of, uh... I gotta sort of address this because this is something else and this is going to steer off in a different direction real quick. You have a lot of people calling out certain communities for damage controlling this game because of its platform affiliation. Now, I'm just going to play Ring Around the rosy here. I think those people are pretty stupid. A lot of people are damage controlling this game. But you know what? Everybody damage controls games that they like. People out there damage control Rise. People out there damage control Killzone Shadowfall. People out there damage control Aliens Colonial Marines for crying out loud. If you like a game, you're going to freaking damage control it because that is something you enjoy and you want that to be the best thing out there. Now, I'm not saying that Destiny is a terrible game. I'm not saying Destiny is the greatest game of all time. Destiny is a average game from a above average developer and that's where a lot of us have been let down that's where a lot of us sort of feel left out or we feel kind of bad you know because this is Bungie and Bungie doesn't turn out six and seven or eight um ranked or eight rated experiences right so What's the problem with Destiny? A lot of people are thinking. A lot of people who still haven't purchased this game, which I should say, buy this game. I mean, you don't have to buy it now. You could buy it in December when the um, expansion pack, the first expansion comes out. Because, uh, I mean, Broketober's right around the corner. We got so many games, and Shadow of Mordor comes out at the end of this month. I can't wait for that. But what's the problem with Destiny? Because Destiny is not a bad game. So here's the thing, this, the mechanics in this game are actually very, very sound. I mean, Bungie knocked it out of the park with the gameplay. But here's where, personally, I think it sort of veers off. And the main thing with that is the story. Now, what they try to do is... It's sort of the story of Destiny and the fact that it seems that this game cannot form its own identity. So, here's the thing. The story is pretty straightforward. I mean, really straight. If you thought Infamous Second Son's story was straightforward, then you're going to be like, what in the F 
happen here. You know, this game, the story is very, very straightforward. I mean, there's, I think there was like one little twist or something, but that twist is really only important if you're involved with the lore in the greater world of the Destiny universe. And here is where I want to make my point. It's the fact that they tried to go for an FPS, MMO, RPG sort of hybrid game, although it's technically not an MMO, it's like a sub MMO with whatever, okay? It, it doesn't have a massive player count, but it has a player count, you know what I'm saying. Um, anyone who's familiar with the experience knows what I'm trying to get at. So a lot of uh, some things we see with RPGs and with MMOs are these really exposition heavy stories that can kind of drag down on the gameplay or drag down on the universe as a whole because there's so much jargon there's so much lore and all of that cannot come across in the story itself and here's where i think the problem with destiny lies the fact that it sort of borrows on that system now i feel that destiny cannot or did not i should say deliver a concise and um a concise story for this particular game a lot of people are saying i know tokenism is whack and genetic jmd gaming remind me of this time and time again this is the first game and what we are expecting to at least be um a uh, crap a trilogy there we go there's the word guys a trilogy this is the first game what we expect to be a trilogy so this game is just laying the foundation of that world now i was bringing it i was bringing up the point that you know even games like mass effect games like the last was games like uncharted one games like the first halo all of these gears of war whatever you want to throw out there portal like whatever you want half-life whatever you want to throw out there that sort of on this level that first game lays a foundation and still tells a concise story within that world while setting up that world at the same exact time and that's where destiny fails that is the largest fail of destiny like i said there is so much jargon in here that it's really really adv it's not even advantageous you're crazy and you have to be a hardcore sort of follower or know someone who really is into this world who's bought into this world to really understand what's going on now I came into the story knowing a lot of the sort of backstory of the Traveler and of the Fallen and the Hive and the Cabal and the Vex and everything and how these races sort of intertwine, what's their beef with each other, whatnot. So I kind of came into it knowing this and that helped my understanding of the story. But for someone who's coming in really not knowing any of that, it's the story's really not going to make sense. It's going to be hard to follow and it's going to suck period it's gonna suck if you don't understand it and that's what the problem is most of the people buying this game i'm gonna put out 80 to 90 percent of people buying this game do not understand all of that lore do not understand all the backstory and do not understand all the jargon that's affiliated with this universe and that's where bungie failed in this game if they wanted to set a decent platform what you have to do is you have to get all of that stuff out of the way or at least make it easy to access. You cannot access this information through the game itself. You have to go on Bungie.net. You have to use your Grimoire cards. You have to go to other places on the internet and actually find this information. So it sort of turns Destiny to an ARG, which is a really, really weird way of thinking about it. But it's true. You know, and that's sort of where i have a problem with destiny i think that's where a lot of people will have a problem with destiny the multiplayer in and of itself i hear people complaining about the multiplayer not being balanced look you can take in your weapons from the story and i heard this on the podcast they were complaining about it not being balanced i'm not gonna put the name of the podcast out there but um uh, for any of you know me personally, you know what podcast I'm talking about because I tend to have problems with it a lot. So they were talking about it not being balanced. But here's the thing. You can take in your weapons from multiplayer, but those weapons are deep. They're, there's, they do something in the code to make them sort of level out as much as possible. So it's not unbalanced. And we've seen this through the alpha. We've seen this through the beta. Now... I just want to hit one more thing before I go because I don't want to ramble on forever and this video is about to reach about 10 minutes long. Now, like I said, this game is not bad. It's definitely worth the purchase. It's definitely a lot of fun. And when you reach, I have to put this out there too, when you reach level 20, which will take you to 
two days, one and a half, if you're really, really into it, maybe two, maybe three for a lot of people. When you reach level 20, this game is not over. You're nowhere near fully leveling up. You haven't seen everything. I mean, heck, the raid was just on last night. I'm level 24. We have some people on our team who are level 26. And we couldn't even get past the first part of the freaking raid. I mean, it, there's a lot of stuff that is there to do in this game. And I feel that um, this game is really... Too reliant on a set mission structure, which is very, very repetitive. Very repetitive mission structure. And I don't know. There's still a lot of stuff left in this game, but a lot of it is based on repetition. A lot of it is based on, hey, you did this thing when you were lower level. Now let's crank up the difficulty and you can go at it again with your friends. Oh, yeah. That sort of thing that kind of happens in this game. It really disappointed me. Now... All in all, to just leave you guys so I don't continue on this stupid ramble, buy the game if you were interested in it. If you played the beta and you had fun, buy it. If you played the alpha and you had fun, buy it. If at one point you were thinking buying this game, buy it. You can always trade it in, right? You can always trade it in. You could just rent it. You could, have a, you could borrow it from a friend. I just think that when the second and third game come along, a lot of these problems will hopefully be fixed you've heard my little thoughts i want to know yours down in the comment section for all the people that have been playing destiny religiously because i know i have um except for some stuff in my personal life that i like to have fun because i have a social life i'm not a social reject but what do you guys think down in the comments section about this game have you been let down are you excited for future incarnations what do you think of the damage control going on in the community and do you think a lot of this is coming from platform sort of fanboys or people who just like the game as a whole because i think it's coming from people who like the game as a whole i mean this game has been hyped up so far to fall this far i mean you've heard my thoughts unscripted i want to know what you guys think don't forget to rate comment favorite and subscribe and i will see you in the next video peace